Thank you to Dr. Wilder for preparing this video. In this example, we're starting with a fractured distoincisal corner. After anesthesia and isolation, use a round burr or 330 diamond in a high-speed handpiece to smooth the sharp edges and remove any unsupported enamel. Then use a long tapered diamond burr to bevel the incisal and facial enamel margins. This involves placing a one millimeter slanted edge in order to increase surface area and thus improve retention of the composite and also to provide a more natural and aesthetic blend between the composite and the natural tooth. A gingival retention groove is generally recommended to provide resistance to proximal displacement of the restoration. This is usually done with a small quarter round burr used to create a shallow 0.25 millimeter groove just inside the dentin enamel junction. Place a rounded contoured matrix strip in the contact area and hold it in position with two fingers while placing a wedge underneath the preparation between the matrix and the adjacent tooth. A properly placed wedge prevents gingival overhang and open contacts. Apply 30 to 40% phosphoric acid etch to the entire preparation to clean off surface debris and remove the smear layer of dentin, taking special care to make sure that the beveled enamel is also etched. Let it sit for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then wash it off thoroughly with water and high volume suction, rinsing for about 10 seconds. Dry off the matrix and gently dry the tooth, but leave it somewhat moist so you don't collapse the dentin collagen fibrils. Apply and scrub Prime and Bond adhesive with a micro brush to all walls and floors of your preparation, including the beveled enamel. Gently air thin the bond to evaporate the solvent and then cure for about 10 seconds. Place your first increment of composite material directly into the preparation. Start by compacting it with a flat composite instrument and shaping the lingual surface of the restoration as you do so. Aim to create proper anatomy without any excess composite. Add a new increment as needed until you have a layer that is about 2 millimeters thick. Once you have your first layer completed, cure for about 20 seconds or as directed by the manufacturer. Add more composite to continue to rebuild the missing tooth structure. You can dip the end of the instrument in a little bit of adhesive to prevent the composite from sticking to the instrument during this process. As you get closer to the missing incisal corner, be sure to hold the matrix strip in place with two fingers of your non-dominant hand. But also don't pull the matrix too tight, which will result in an under-contoured final restoration. It's also good practice to use one of those fingers pushing against the lingual surface to help maintain a proper contour in that lingual area.
be sure to cure from the incisal, facial, and lingual directions as needed. With an explorer, confirm to make sure there is no deficiency of material at any of the margins. At this point, you can remove the matrix strip. If needed, you can add additional composite to the incisal edge to give you more leeway when contouring later on. We recommend a soft flex finishing disc in a slow speed contra angle handpiece to reconstruct the ideal contour for a class 4 composite restoration. Use light, steady strokes while being sure to create a natural rounded incisal edge rather than an unnatural flat across edge. An explorer can tell you where extra composite still remains, which can be removed again with a soft flex disc. It's easy to remove too much composite, so whenever possible, keep part of the disc on natural tooth and part on restorative material to avoid under contouring the restoration. You can contour the lingual aspect of the composite with a football finishing burr to recreate the natural anatomy of the tooth. Light, intermittent strokes with the burr are best. Softflex discs are also fantastic for contouring the line angles and embrasures, which are essential for an excellent aesthetic result. You can look to the contralateral tooth to get an idea of how to establish ideal anatomy. A number 12 curved scalpel blade works really well to remove any remaining flash in the embrasure areas. Remove the wedge when it's time to clean up the gingival embrasure so it doesn't get in your way. Be sure that you're working with plenty of light. You can use a sanding strip to smooth out the proximal surface, especially below the contact area. Consider loading the soft flex disc backwards with the sanding surface pointing toward the handpiece, so you can use pull strokes to finish the restoration. With a wedge in place, you can also use a Talfelmeyer matrix band to adjust the incisal embrasure. Finally, you can finish and polish the restoration with a silicone impregnated rubber polishing cup. Green, 
then yellow, and then white is the typical coarse to fine Jiffy polishing system. A cup is preferred for the facial surface, whereas a point is preferred for the lingual surface due to their shape. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video.